breath and come to tell.
Winters? <laughs> well, enough said. We never give up. We never stop growing. It's part of who we are. Easy isn't in our vocabulary, but hards made us strong. It infuses our blood with fortitude that fuels our resolve, our resilience, and our progress. In Illinois, we don't take the easy way out. If it breaks, we fix it. If it falls, we rebuild it. We don't care much for the glitz and glam big talkers. We're big doers. And no matter how hard the road ahead seems, we overcome it and are always moving forward. Big climbs are second nature. Even without so much as a hill for 300 miles, hard is part of who we are. Sometimes hard gives us the blues, but it also makes us champions. They call us the heartland in Illinois because that's what we are all about. Heart, dedication, devotion, family, love. These great plains produce more than just corn and soybeans. They turn out generations of losers. Four and seven years ago. Thinkers, builders, and winners. But when it does come to corn, soybeans, and just about everything else, if you can think it, we can grow it. We'll trade you pork bellies, currencies, and options, but we'll never give up our can-do, put your head down, won't leave until it's done perseverance that makes us who we are and brought us here. The pioneers of covered wagons that arrived at this frontier found a sprawling swath of prairie grass and have turned into a force in our country and the world. Our innovations have paved the way and reached heights no one ever thought possible. And ours is the spirit that turned a hamburger stand into a global empire. When Illinois speaks, that our destiny is shared, the world listens. It comes as no surprise to us that we're the 25th largest state by size, but the fifth largest economy in the US. We are an engine for growth. We are also an engine for change. We don't shy away when something needs doing. We step up. That's what our parents taught us. It's what we teach our children. Just 150 years ago, our Illinois soldiers ran to the front lines of a deadly war that threatened freedom and liberty in numbers greater than nearly any other state in this country. Led by a president from this town and a general from a few towns away. Today, tomorrow, Brave men and women return home to Illinois in a different uniform, but with the same commitment, service, selfless dedication to a cause bigger than ourselves, and a promise that tomorrow will be better than today. Look around you. We're more than mothers and fathers, teachers, farmers, first responders, more than artists, athletes, engineers. We're tough. We're unstoppable and we're ready to take on anything that stands in our way. We are the people of Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Air National Guard Band of the Midwest and the Illinois Army National Guard Band. Michael Freyrex was raised in the small farm town of Gifford. 
a passionate and principled finance professional, Frerich served as Champaign County Auditor and was elected twice to the State Senate. He won the third closest statewide race in modern history, becoming the first Democrat ever elected to statewide office from Champaign County. Treasurer-elect Michael Frerichs. Leslie Geisler Munger is a native Illinoisan born in Joliet. She is a former brand management executive where she led an $800 million business managing large budgets, solving difficult problems, and delivering results. She has been an active community volunteer and leader for the Riverside Foundation, a nonprofit residential facility for developmentally disabled adults in Lincolnshire, where she was named Volunteer of the Year in 2013. Munger and her husband John live in Lincolnshire and have two sons, Tom and Andy. Please welcome Comptroller Designate Leslie Geisler Munger, her husband John Munger, and her sons Tom and Andrew. Jesse White is the longest serving Illinois Secretary of State, but the first in Illinois history to be elected to five terms, having won landslide victories in each of his re-election campaigns. He has repeatedly been the top vote getter in the state. Secretary White has dedicated his efforts to restoring integrity to the office, to improving efficiency and customer service, and to making our roads the safest ever. Please welcome Secretary of State Jesse White, daughter Glenna White Jones, and grandchildren Jesse White III and Susan Jones. <laughs> the first woman elected as Illinois Attorney General in 2002. Lisa Madigan is now the longest serving attorney general in Illinois and the senior most female attorney general in the country. Over the course of her administration, Attorney General Madigan has established a national reputation for aggressive efforts to protect consumers, safeguard communities, and fight for open, honest government. And her leadership has resulted in billions of dollars in unprecedented revenue generated for the state of Illinois. Please welcome Attorney General Lisa Madigan, her husband Pat Burns, and her daughters Rebecca and Lucy Burns. <laughs> Evelyn Sanguinetti is the first Latina Lieutenant Governor in Illinois history. The daughter of immigrants, Evelyn is the living embodiment of the American dream. Evelyn, her husband Raymond, and their three children live in Wheaton. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor-elect Evelyn Sanguinetti, her husband Raymond, and children Victoria, Michael, and Nicholas Sanguinetti. Bruce Rauner was born and raised in Illinois. He helped build one of the nation's most successful and respected investment firms. He and his wife Diana are among the leading philanthropists in the state, with a particular focus on improving education. 
Diana serves as the president of the Ounce of Prevention, a nationally respected early childhood education organization focused on improving opportunity for the most disadvantaged. Bruce and Diana Rauner and family. Please welcome Governor-elect Bruce Rauner, his wife Diana, and children Elizabeth Rauner Brewer and Matt Brewer, Stephanie, Eric, Margaret, Matthew, and Catherine Rauner. Please rise and remove all hats for the presentation of the colors. We are proud to welcome the Chicago Blackhawks' own Jim Corneliuson who will lead us in the Star Spangled Banner. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Please join Gold Star families of Central Illinois as they lead the audience in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please return to your seats while we enjoy a musical selection from Bo Davidson, a graduate of Northwestern University.
is courage what is honor are these words or just ideals long forgotten what is duty what is glory are they just written down in some old story when we hear a word like freedom do we know what it really means or do we take it all for granted living like kings and queens we are blessed to live in freedom blessed to live in peace blessed with food and shelter blessed with life on lease blessed to gather freely blessed to have a voice and blessed that someone brave or fought so we can have a choice we are blessed oh we are blessed is faith a notion or fear of hell or have we lost our very faith in faith itself is it our rock or is it madness or do we cling to it like rain in times of sadness it is easy to remember but easy to forget the beauty of our country and the simple gifts we get we are blessed to live in freedom blessed to live in peace blessed with food and shelter blessed with life on lease blessed to gather freely blessed to have a voice and blessed that someone brave or fought so we could have a choice we are blessed with food and shelter blessed with life on lease blessed to gather freely blessed to have a voice and blessed that someone brave or fought so we could have a choice we are blessed oh Springfield, Michael Houston. Good morning. Welcome to the capital of Illinois and Mr. Lincoln's hometown. In 1861, as Abraham Lincoln was leaving Springfield for Washington, D.C., to begin his presidency, he knew that great co conflict, great sacrifices, and great turmoil lie ahead. In his parting words at a train depot just a couple of blocks from here, he said he did not know when or if he would return because the task before him was greater than anything that had rested upon anyone. 
Many thought he would fail. However, he brought together a team, not always a team of friends, but what has been called by Doris Kearns Goodwin, a team of rivals. A team of great Americans ready to do their duty to save the nation. Today, historians consider Mr. Lincoln to be our nation's greatest president, and we remember him as our state's most precious hero, because in the depths of great loss, sorrow, and destruction, he was able to succeed and do what many considered to be impossible. Like Mr. Lincoln, today, Governor Rauner faces challenges of monumental proportions. He, too, must call upon some of Illinois' most talented residents to step up and do their part in service to our state. He is facing odds and scenarios that look impossible to overcome. But Governor Rauner, like Mr. Lincoln, can overcome the odds and work solutions to what many are calling monumental problems. And today, I am here to say that the people of the city of Springfield are ready to be a part of that team. Over the course of history, the seat of state government has had a positive and mutually beneficial working relationship with its elected officials. The people of Springfield look forward to strengthening this historic bond. We welcome you and Mrs. Rauner to our community and offer our commitment to working with you to solve Illinois' problems. May God bless Governor Rauner. May God bless all the state elected officials who are taking office this week. May God bless the great state of Illinois. And may God bless the great American city of Springfield. Thank you. Please welcome the Congressman Aaron Schock and Congresswoman Robin Kelly. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here today. On behalf of the Illinois Congressional Delegation, I welcome all of you and congratulate Governor Rauner as well as our other wonderful constitutional officers. Aaron and I have known each other for a very long time. We met at Bradley University. He was a student and I was on the Board of Trustees. He then followed me to the State House and I followed him to Congress. We're here to show bipartisan spirit because it works so well in D.C. I think we voted the same about 10 times so far. Despite that, Aaron knows that I have his back and I know that he has mine. And we also know that working together, we can accomplish so much more. Governor Rauner, we wish you the very best, but if you get lonely as it can sometimes be at the top and need someone to call, you and the president are kind of in the same boat and I'm sure he'd love to chat with you. <laughs> With that, welcome again. Congratulations, Governor Rauner and First Lady, and I turn it over to my colleague. Thank you, Robin. Well, today reminds me of a period of time in ancient Rome, uh, 450 years before Christ. The Roman Empire had established itself as the seat of power throughout the world. But all was not well in the capital of Rome. Uh, the courts were corrupt. Uh, the Senate had raised taxes to an all-time high level to pay for the bloated bureaucracy. Uh, and even its neighbors began poaching uh, from the Roman territory. Northern tribes were invading on nearly a daily basis. The people of Rome rallied behind a man named Lucius Quinticus Cincinnatus, somebody who had never been in politics, a very wealthy individual, a successful business owner, and one of the largest landowners of Rome. He agreed to serve as consul and eventually was made dictator of the Roman Empire. He reestablished order in the courts. He lowered the tax rate of the Roman Empire and created growth. 
and he reestablished some semblance of normalcy in the Roman Senate. He then resigned his post after two years and went back to live back his normal life back on his family's estate. Even today, the term Cincinnatus is referred to people in public service who serve with dignity, honesty, and who have a record of accomplishment. Governor elect, we wish you the speed and the success of Cincinnatus. And I know the people of Illinois will forgive him for not accomplishing it all in two years, because after all, he was just elected governor and not dictator. <laughs> we stand here united. We stand here united as Republicans and Democrats, committed to giving this governor and this bipartisan legislature the tools, the resources, and the federal flexibility they need to fix the state and return Illinois to the prominence she so rightly deserves. Congratulations to you all, and Godspeed. Thank you. And now for the invocation, His Excellency Blaise Supich. Bless the work of our hands, O Lord. Bless the work of our hands. Surgeons' hands that cure, and nurses' hands that calm, farmers' hands that sow, and migrants' hands that harvest, generous hands that feed the hungry, and faith-filled hands that shelter the homeless. Artist hands that create, and laborers' hands that build. First responders' hands that keep us safe, and teachers' hands that pass on knowledge and faith. Children's hands that need our hands, and parents' hands folded in prayer for their children. Journalists' hands that keep us connected and informed, and business leaders' hands which trade and employ. Waiters' hands that serve, and housekeepers' hands that clean. Unemployed hands that seek work, and injured hands that seek justice. Lawmakers' hands that craft policies and laws, and ministers' hands raised in praise. These are the hands you have given us, O Lord. Bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of Governor Bruce Rauner's hands. Hands extended in friendship and service this day. Hands inviting us to join our hands together in partnership so that indeed you can bless the work of our hands, O Lord, you can bless the work of our hands. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congressman Rodney Davis. It's very bittersweet for me to be standing here today because there's somebody, our friend, that we all know and miss who should be on this stage today. With her abounding energy and humor, Judy Bar Topinka would have made this day even funnier. As elected officials, let us take a lesson from Judy that it's less about us and it's more about the people we represent. 
Let us leave here without, with that memory of Judy, and please join me in a moment of silence in her honor. Thank you and never forget her service to the people of Illinois. And now, Illinois' own son, Jeff Matsey. James Meeks. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we love you. You said in your word, how can two walk together except they agree? There are great challenges ahead for the state of Illinois and now we pray for unity. We pray for Speaker Michael Madigan and the members of the House of Representatives. We pray for President John Cullerton and the members of the Illinois Senate, and whom I'll have to stand before in a few days to be confirmed. <laughs> we pray for Governor-elect Bruce Rauner. How can two walk together except they agree? We pray, God, that you would allow the House, the Senate, and the Governor to work together to build a greater Illinois. Our state is great, but our state can be greater. Our schools are great, but our schools can be greater. Our economy is great, but our economy could be greater. But it can't happen unless the members of the House and Senate and Governor come together in unity. 
So the election is over, the speeches are done, and now the work begins. We know that you have the power to unify both branches of government and the executive mansion. Give our governor-elect wisdom, give him knowledge, and help him and help this state be the greatest state in the union. We love you and we praise you. It is in your name we pray, amen. And now, Judge Sharon J. Coleman to administer the oath of office for Governor-elect Bruce Rauner. Raise your right hand, place your hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Bruce Vincent Rauner. I, Bruce Vincent Rauner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of governor the duties of the office of governor to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations governor time it is. It's afternoon. Good afternoon, Illinois. Great day, Illinois. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. I want to begin by thanking my wife, Diana. She's my partner. She's my best friend. And she's going to be a tremendous first lady. Thank you. And thank you to our six kids who have endured a lot over the last two years and will be having to put up with a lot more over the next four. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge Governor Pat Quinn for his years of service to the state and the people of Illinois. I'd like to recognize and thank our distinguished guests here today, Madam Chief Justice and distinguished members of the court, President Cullerton, Speaker Madigan, Leader Redonio, Leader Durkin, Attorney General Madigan, 
Secretary of State White, Comptroller Designate Munger, Treasurer Elect Frerichs, Members of the General Assembly, Members of the Congressional Delegation, Governor Edgar, thank you, Mayor Houston, Mayor Emanuel, Archbishop Supich, and Major General Crumrai, and all the members of our National Guard, thank you for your service. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. You're the best partner I could possibly have to transform our state government. And you'll be a terrific lieutenant governor. Thank you. I'd like to express my very deepest gratitude to our veterans and our servicemen and women here today and around the world. God bless you. Thank you for your service to our country. As governor, I will do everything in my power to support you. I also want to say a very special thank you to our police officers, our corrections officers, our firefighters, and all those who risk their lives to protect the families of Illinois. Thank you. I look forward to being an ally and an advocate for you and working very closely together. It's an honor to stand before you, before all the people of Illinois today. I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm privileged, and I'm excited. I love Illinois. I want ours to be a great state. I want ours to be a great home for every family here. And I'm ready to go to work for you. You know, as I've traveled our state over the last few years, I've met with tens of thousands of people. I've met with teachers and farmers. I've met with factory workers and coal miners, college students, retirees, the people who are the heart and soul of Illinois. In that process, I've met with thousands of small business owners. And in our discussions, I've been stunned, I've been shocked, actually, by how many of them are frustrated trying to build their businesses here and are thinking about leaving. I visited one company called Keats Manufacturing in Wheeling. Back in 1958, Bert and Glenn Keats started a metal stamping company in a storefront on Cicero Avenue in Chicago. Their father had never made it past high school, but both of them made it through college, and they were eager to start out on their own. They had one employee and a couple machines. They worked long hours, a second job, and sacrificed much. But they made it, and their company took off. Today, Keats Manufacturing employs 110 Illinois workers and has nearly 75 machines running 24 hours a day five days a week. The story of Bert and Glenn Keats was not an uncommon path in our state. And it wasn't just Chicago. And it wasn't just manufacturing. It was Peoria. It was Rockford. It was Decatur. It was agriculture. It was transportation. It was technology. Illinois was a place where people like Bert and Glenn Keats from all over the country and indeed from all over the world, wanted to come because Illinois was a land of opportunity, almost without parallel in America. Today, Illinois is very different. The grandsons of Bert and Glenn Keats, I met with them, they tell me they couldn't have started their company in Illinois today. When their grandfather started the company, all its customers were in Illinois companies. They were all Illinois companies. They went door to door to find them. But today, none of their customers are Illinois companies. They have all left. And the grandsons told me that they themselves are feeling the pressure of high taxes and high regulation. Today, Illinois is not able to compete with our neighboring states. Our citizens are suffering because of it. 
and in many cases, they are up and leaving. Last year, last year we lost more people than any other state in America. And over the last 10 years, we have ranked right near the bottom of all 50 states for out-migration to other states. People are leaving to find jobs or because they run companies and they're taking their jobs with them. Our local businesses look in every direction and see states that are more appealing. Lifelong Illinoisans look at their future and think maybe they can achieve more outside Illinois. You probably know a neighbor, a coworker, or maybe even a son or a daughter who has said, I can do better somewhere else. It breaks your heart. But you know it's hard to argue with them. We need a booming economy that is pro-growth, pro-business, pro-job creation, or we won't have the resources to solve any of our other problems. We must stay our state. Thank you. Our state must become competitive again. In the weeks ahead, I'll be asking the legislature to work with me to pass a comprehensive jobs and economic package that will get Illinois working again. Let's get, let's get our sons and daughters to return home. We'll do it. One of the main reasons companies have been leaving Illinois is that they don't have confidence in the financial condition of our state. We are in the midst of a government financial crisis that has been building for decades. Its roots lie in bad decisions, bad practices, and bad management by state government. It is not a partisan creation. It is a truly bipartisan one. Our government has spent more than we could afford, borrowed money, and called it revenue. Rather than responsibly budgeting the money we had, we implemented programs we couldn't afford. In the face of a declining economy, we raised taxes. This hurt our economy even more, put more stress on our social safety net, and pushed more Illinoisans out of our state, leaving fewer taxpayers to support the government. As a result, today, Illinois is not as competitive as we need to be, and we cannot be as compassionate as we want to be. Some in government will be tempted to once again take the easy road and leave the real problems for another day and the next generation. But we cannot do that, because to do so, to conduct business as we've been doing it, would be morally corrupt. Instead, instead, we have an opportunity to accomplish something historic, to fix years of busted budgets and broken government, to forge a path toward long-term prosperity and a brighter future, to make Illinois the kind of state that others aspire to become, a national leader in job growth and education quality. <laughs> to achieve that will require sacrifice, sacrifice by all of us, politicians and interest groups, business and labor, those who pay for government and those who depend 
on government services and need us and who we need to support. Each person here today and all those throughout the state will be called upon to share in the sacrifice so that one day we can again share in Illinois' prosperity. We must all shake up our old ways of thinking. I promise you, our administration, this administration, will make our decisions based upon the next generation, not on the next election. I pledge to work on a bipartisan basis to drive results and get things done. We must be united in our willingness to sacrifice and do what is right, even if it is difficult. We must accept the challenge and the sacrifice, knowing that it will lead us to something greater. We must forget the days of feeling good about just making it through another year by patching over major problems with stitches that are bound to break. Those stitches are now busting wide open, and we must begin taking immediate, decisive action. That's why today my first action as governor, first action today, I will be giving a directive every state, by executive order, every state agency will be asked to freeze non-essential spending. I will ask every agency to review and report on every contract that's been signed since November 1st. And I will follow through on my personal pledge to reduce my, my own salary to a dollar, and I will decline all benefits. We're setting a new tone today. Our state's crisis is not only financial. We have a moral crisis, an ethical crisis as well. We have a state government that too few have faith in, and that lack of faith is justified. It undermines people's willingness to sacrifice and do what is necessary to help the government in its mission. Illinoisans today see insider deals and cronyism rewarded. They see lobbyists writing bills for special interests and the taxpayers being left with the tab. They see government union bosses negotiating sweetheart deals across the table from governors they've spent tens of millions of dollars to help elect. That's a corrupt bargain. That's a corrupt bargain, and the people of Illinois are left to wonder, where do they fit in? Who's looking out for them and their families? Taxpayers' money belongs to them, not the government. We have a moral obligation to minimize how much we take and to ensure what we do take is spent efficiently and effectively. Every dollar we spend unnecessarily inside government is a dollar we can't put into classrooms and our social service providers or leave in the pockets of entrepreneurs and homeowners and hardworking families of Illinois. To the people of Illinois and the people outside of our state who've been reluctant to invest in Illinois because of the insider deals and cronyism, I say this. 
I'm nobody that nobody sent. And I've come to work for you. I've come to work for you and every family in our great state. I will send a clear signal to everyone in our state and to those watching from outside our borders that business as usual is over. It stops now. Tomorrow, I will sign an executive order that will improve ethics and accountability in the executive branch of state government. The These actions and others to immediately follow will focus on regaining our state's good name and reputation. We must prove every day that we have learned our lessons and we've changed our ways. Now, this is a very emotional, personal issue for me. In everything we do, everything we do, we must ask ourselves, what does this mean for the next generation? For in order to thrive, we must prepare the next generation for success. From cradle to career, the people of Illinois deserve world-class educational opportunities. From early childhood and K through 12 schools, to vocational and technical training, to community colleges and higher ed, we need to invest adequately in every neighborhood. Next to being a mother or a father, teaching is the most important job in the world. And we must support our many good teachers. That means putting more, that means putting more directly into the classrooms, reforming the education bureaucracy, rolling back costly mandates, and giving more students access to great schools. A high quality education is essential for higher lifetime earnings, a competitive, world-class workforce, and strong economic growth. It's the key to bringing back the American dream for every family in Illinois, for making the American dream a reality for everyone here, a truly better life for the next generation. If we work together, Illinois can be great again. We have everything needed to thrive. Great location, the economic and cultural center of the Midwest, fertile farms, infrastructure, and most importantly, wonderful, hardworking people. We, we need the policies and the leadership to make us the best we can possibly be. In just three short years, this is an exciting time, in just three short years, our great state will be celebrating its 200th birthday. Yes, 2018 will be the bicentennial of Illinois. What a perfect time, what a perfect time these next few years will be to return our beloved state to its rightful place as a leader among the states of America. A state that, as we prepare for our bicentennial, is ready to seize the future. A state where not only manufacturing companies like the Keatses want to be, but where the next big things happen. We're a state where entrepreneurs want to be. A state where technology companies want to start. Where the next generation of manufacturing occurs. Where family farms that have made us the breadbasket for the world can pass from one generation to the next. Where young couples want to start their families 
and their children are inspired in their schools. Illinois is a state that truly embodies all that is great about America. Since the days of Lincoln, we've stood as a beacon of freedom and justice. Now let us embrace all that is wonderful about Illinois. The reasons we love it here, our culture of hard work and responsibility, grounded solid values, civic commitment and generosity, harness our values so that our next century is one of prosperity. We can do that if we work together, just as a family does when it faces tough times. Illinois is our home. Right now our home is hurting, but home and family are worth sacrificing for, worth fighting for. Together, let's do the hard work to rebuild our home. I'm ready to go to work for you. I'm ready to fight for you. God bless you. God bless our great state of Illinois, and God bless America. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Judge Lewis B. Morgan, Jr. to administer the oath of office for Lieutenant Governor-elect Evelyn Sanguinetti. take my cane. Evelyn Sanguinetti. 
Do solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear. That I shall support the Constitution of the United States. That I shall support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of. Lieutenant Governor. Lieutenant Governor. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. My fellow Illinoisans, I stand here today humbled by the journey before us, grateful for the trust you've bestowed upon me, and honored to be the first Latina to take on this great adventure. Buenas tardes. Me encuentro hoy aquí con tremenda humildad antes del viaje que tenemos adelante, agradecida por la confianza que han puesto en mí y honrado de ser la primera latina en asumir esta aventura. Gracias. I want to take a moment to thank Governor Pat Quinn, as well as Lieutenant Governor Sheila Simon. Thank you very much for your service to the state of Illinois. Thank you. I'd also like to thank them for the generosity and cooperation that they have shown during this transition phase. The challenges our state faces are very real. They will not be met easily, and there are many that we will confront in days and weeks ahead. I know that for so many of you, the last few years have tested your faith in the promise of our state. We Illinoisans are as great as we ever have been, but our government is broken, and it is keeping us from doing what we have done better than most, and that's to create jobs and prosperity and to educate our children. But we are all gathered here on this very special day because we have chosen a new beginning. We have. A more prosperous future, one filled with opportunity, positive change, and the best Illinois can be. Todos estamos aquí reunidos en este día porque hemos elegido un nuevo comienzo. As the daughter of immigrant parents and the first Latina Lieutenant Governor, I am the living embodiment that anything, absolutely anything, is possible. And I know the potential of Illinois. Como hija de padres inmigrantes y la primera latina vicegobernadora, sé que todo es posible y también conozco el potencial de Illinois. I made it to the stage because I got an education and I was afforded an opportunity. And that's exactly what Bruce and I want for everyone in Illinois so that we could all succeed together. We stand before you today to serve all Illinoisans, from the migrant families that I connected with in Arcola, 
and the rural farmers downstate, and working moms just like me. The time is now. Hemos llegado. We have arrived, good people. And I thank you. God bless you all. Que Dios los bendiga. And now, Judge Gary Fireman to administer the oath of office for Attorney General Lisa Madigan. Please raise your right hand. State after me. I, Lisa Madigan. I, Lisa Madigan. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Attorney General. The duties of the Office of Attorney General. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Good afternoon. Let me start by thanking Judge Gary Feinerman, who swore me in. Gary is an exceptional lawyer who served in my office as Solicitor General for four years. In 2010, President Obama appointed Gary to serve on the District Court for the Northern District of Illinois, allowing the people of Illinois to continue to benefit from Gary's legal talents. Another big thanks goes to Father Manny Dorantes, for joining me and my family at the prayer service this morning. We got to know Father Manny when he served as the associate pastor at our parish, St. Clements, and we were sad when he went to get his MBA from Northwestern. But I know wherever he is serving, Father Manny will always bring joy and light to Jesus' teachings. My deepest thanks, as always, goes to my family. My mom, Shirley, as you might have just witnessed, is truly the most loving and generous Grammy a grandchild could have. And my father is also wonderful with his granddaughters. They share a strong love of ice cream, which I've learned my daughters eat for breakfast when they stay over at their grandparents' house. So mom and dad, I love you, and I want to thank you for the endless love you give to our family, especially Rebecca and Lucy. I also thank my sisters and brothers for their love and babysitting. They are terrific aunts and uncles. My husband, Pat, he is awesome. He is patient and kind and completely supportive which is awfully tough some days for the spouse of an elected official. So Pat, I am blessed to be married to you, and I love you. Our daughters, Rebecca and Lucy, every day you brighten our lives with your humor, curiosity, and uncontained joy. I will always love you dearly. Thank you. And my sincere thanks to the people of Illinois. 
I am humbled and honored to earn your trust to serve as Attorney General again. I promise you, it is with humility, purpose, and enthusiasm that I embark on my fourth term. Humility, because it is so important that those of us in elected office always remain guided by and grounded in our one true mission, service to the public. The principles that should guide our service are simply stated in the preamble of the Illinois Constitution. It says that the people of Illinois established our Constitution not only to maintain a representative government, but also to eliminate poverty and inequality, assure legal, social, and economic justice, and provide opportunity for the fullest development of the individual. These principles must serve as our inspiration and purpose for our work each day because they are the core ideals that we swear to support by taking our oaths. To eliminate poverty and inequality, that requires speaking for those who have no voice, and it drives so much of the work that I do as Attorney General. I speak for patients who are denied access to medical care. I speak for homeowners who are cheated by home repair con artists. I speak for families struggling with unfair rate increases from utility companies. I speak for communities fighting for cleaner air to breathe and water to drink. And I fight for the financial security of every person in Illinois as we face increasing threats from identity theft and data breaches. It's greatly satisfying to know I've helped hundreds of thousands of people who come to my office when they thought they had nowhere else to turn. Eliminating poverty and inequality also means making sure that everyone pays their fair share. Since I first took this oath, I have recovered well over $10 billion for the state. By last count, that worked out to bringing in well over $32 for every general revenue fund dollar appropriated to my office, an important return on investment during these tough times. The Constitution also calls us to assure legal, social, and economic justice. You could say that principle defines my office's mission. I fought for economic justice by holding banks responsible for their fraudulent conduct that caused the mortgage foreclosure crisis. And I've recovered more than $2.8 billion in relief for Illinois homeowners, communities, and pension systems. I've also fought to ensure justice by removing barriers faced by people with disabilities in advocating for LGBT individuals to share fully in all of the protections and benefits of our laws. And assuring justice is why I will never stop going after child predators or perpetrators of domestic violence or elder abuse. Finally, to provide opportunity for the fullest development of the individual. As we all agree, one of the most important paths to opportunity is a good education. That is why I will continue to fight against predatory student loan practices and poorly accredited for-profit colleges that have too often left the upcoming generation burdened with a lifetime of debt instead of opportunity. For any of us in government to be successful, we need the faith and trust of the people. So part of my mission has been to restore faith in government by advocating for stronger ethics laws, prosecuting those who seek to profit at taxpayers' expense, and by creating a public access counselor so that people can see what their government is really doing. Our Constitution sets important goals for those of us in public service to attain. So today, we must rededicate ourselves to our state's principles and recommit with humility, 
purpose, and enthusiasm to eliminating inequality, assuring justice, and providing opportunity for all. Thank you. And now, Judge Clarence Birch to administer the oath of office for Secretary of State, Jesse White. Secretary, Mr. Secretary of State, could you please place your hand on the Bible? Could you repeat after me? Could you raise your right hand? I, state your name, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the Secretary of State to the best of my ability. So help me God, the Secretary of State. Congratulations, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank Governor Rahner, Lieutenant Governor Sanger Renetti, Attorney Lisa Madigan, Treasury Ferrix, Comptroller Munger, distinguished guests, families, and friends. I am humbled and proud to be here today to continue to serve the people of Illinois. Our state has had its fair share of negative headlines and have had some bad apples who have taken the oath of office. But I can assure you that the overwhelming majority of the people I have had, had the distinction of, and privilege of serving with have served with honor and distinction. <laughs> For those people, I want to, those people that, that I want to mention today Governor Pat Quinn has served our state with honor and distinction. Whether working as a consumer advocate, supporting our veterans, or leading the state as governor, he has always put people first. As governor, he inherited a mess, and I'm proud to say that he took the tough stand to bring honor back to Illinois. I was proud to work with him. Comptroller Judy Bartopinka was a trailblazer. She was a straight shooter, and we worked together in the Illinois General Assembly, and she dedicated herself to making sure that only, not only did she take on the job, but she also took on the responsibility that goes with it. She did all she could to help make our state a better place for all of us. I was fortunate to work with her directly in the Illinois General Assembly and again as a constitutional officer. Although we were from different political parties, we always respected each other and worked for the common good. I miss my friend Judy. <laughs> Illinois is a better state because of the life's work of these two special people. Like Pat Quinn, Judy Bartopinka, and many others, I've always considered public service to be a, an honorable profession, one that comes with incredible responsibility and one that I take very seriously. The people of Illinois have trusted me with their confidence and support to continue my agenda in the Secretary of State's office. It's a responsibility that I have it, never and will never take for granted. Since 1999, when I 
became the first Secretary of State sworn in in this office, I focused my work to restore integrity, to make the office more efficient and customer friendly, and to make our roads safer. And I am also proud of the fact that we have made great strides in each of these important areas. I want to thank my good friend, Joe, Inspector Joe, Jim Burns, who is the former U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, who has made my mandate to restore integrity to this office a reality. Together, we drafted and passed legislation that created the office of the Secretary of State, Inspector Joe. And Jim has made that office a national model. For as long as many of us can remember, visiting the DMV was once one sure that many of us would like to avoid. I think, in fact, many of us would rather go to the dentist's office rather than to the DMV. <laughs> long lines, inefficiency, and questionable uh, public service were not what the people of Illinois deserved. It was so bad. Many told me in 1999 that I, was, I would never be able to improve the office and I shouldn't waste my time in trying. Well, to those who know me, it's never a good idea to say that I can't achieve. Those long lines that once wrapped around the building are gone. No longer do you have to go to our DNV and bring your duffel bag, sleeping bag, or your lunch pail. We try to get you out as quickly as we possibly can. And through the implementation of new technologies, the office is streamlined and efficient. And through training and retraining, customer service is job one. To be sure, my job is not done, and we will be rolling out new initiatives that will further improve the once dreaded visit to the DMV. The Illinois Secretary of State's office is the largest of its kind in the nation, and it touches more lives than any other office in government. And we have streamlined our services throughout the agency. We reformed the truck driving licensing program and improved our services for businesses and lobbyists and investors. We offer better opportunities for those who visit libraries throughout the state and we have made it easier for victims of crime to be compensated. Our organ donor program is a national model, and our state archives protects our rich history. I am proud of these accomplishments, but I am pr practically proud of the fact that we have really enjoyed great success in the area of road safety. Jim Edgar once told me that he dreaded to hear news reports of road fatalities caused by an individual he licensed. This job is serious. Lives are at stake. And that's why we're working hard to make our roads safer. We have toughened our DUI laws, which are now considered the best in the country. Our efforts have resulted in reducing drunk driving fatalities by 60% since 1999. But we didn't stop there. Nationally, the leading cause of deaths for teens is traffic crashes. Tragically, in a 15-month period of time between 2005 and 2006, 15 teenagers in Tazewell County lost their lives on Illinois roads. I was heartbroken and I was angry. As Secretary of State, I needed to do something about it. I created a task force made up of legislators, educators, law enforcement officers, judges, and traffic safety experts from around the state and the country. Together, we revamped the licensing program for new teen drivers. We acquired more training, extended the length of the learner's permit and enhance 
the penalties for failing to comply with the program. The result, teen drivers in Illinois have dropped by nearly 55%. That's good, but let's be clear. I'm not satisfied. One death is one too many, and that's why I am reconvening our Traffic Safety Task Force to further improve the road safety initiatives. <clears throat> many of you know about my career as a lawmaker, educator, professional athlete, paratrooper, county, and state official. And over the past 55 years as a founding coach of the Jesse White Tumbling Team, I'm proud that through my program, over 15,000 young people were given an opportunity to contribute to society and live long and productive lives. I believe that when you come through this world and you become successful, you must give back. I also believe that every day you should do something good for someone. Our future rests with our young people. I say this is not to brag, but to acknowledge those people who have had a significant impact on my life, which has allowed me to succeed and to give back to others. Most of them you may not be familiar with, but each played an important role in my life. People like Warren Chapman, who helped me to get a scholarship to Alabama State College. Claude Walt, who taught me baseball. Ben Schoenfeld, who taught me to be a gymnast. Fred Ross, my basketball coach. Iron Man McKinnis, a gentleman who taught me about life. Professor Lockhart at Alabama State College. Alonzo Krim, a principal of the elementary school. Pete Reeser, professional baseball player. Rip Collins, professional baseball player. Alvin Tappy from Peoria, Illinois, or better yet, Quincy, Illinois. The Honorable George W. Dunn and my former minister, Dr. Martin Luther King. My parents, Jesse White Sr. and Julia White, will always be my true heroes and inspiration. I thank all of them and so many others who have helped me along the path. In closing, I want to thank my family friends for joining me today, and to thank my staff, led by Tom Benigno, the greatest Roman of them all, for his dedication and loyalty. Without them, I could have not been able to carry out my aggressive agenda. I congratulate my fellow constitutional officers and members of the Illinois General Assembly. Governor Rahner, I congratulate you, sir, and uh, you, can rest in the knowledge that I am committed to working with you to help make Illinois a better place for all of us. To the people of Illinois, I want to remind you that I served my country as a paratrooper with the 101st Airborne Division. As they would say when you jump out of a perfect airplane, you never, never worry about the jump, it's a sudden stop. <laughs> and then when you jump out of an airplane, it's all the way, not halfway. That's how I run my life. I will never quit. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you. And as they would say in my neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse White is here to share with you his experience and commitment to serving the people of the state of Illinois in a manner in which they can richly deserve and can appreciate. I am reporting for duty. We've come to the point in our program where the comptroller is scheduled to come forward and take the oath of office. 
Sadly, with the passing of our friend Judy Barr Topinka on December 10th, 2014, she is unable to be sworn in for the term to which she was elected last November by the voters of our great state. Therefore, Secretary White, in my first formal action as governor, it is with a heavy heart but full confidence that Judy would approve of the action I take today, that I declare the office of Comptroller to be vacant at this time. Pursuant to Article 5, Section 7 of the Constitution of 1970, I hereby appoint Leslie Munger to fill the vacancy and ask that Leslie come forward to take the oath of office at this time. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I Leslie Geisler Munger, Leslie Geisler Munger, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that, I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of, the office of, Comptroller of, the State of, Illinois, of Comptroller of the State of Illinois to the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Governor Rauner, Lieutenant Governor Sanguinetti, Attorney General Madigan, Speaker, Secretary of State White, Treasurer Frerix, and distinguished guests. It is my honor to be here today, and I am humbled by the opportunity to serve as Illinois State Comptroller. As one who grew up in Joliet, graduated from the University of Illinois, and has worked and raised a family here, I am so grateful and excited for the chance to help address the most pressing issues of our state. I'm also incredibly thankful for my husband, John, our sons, Tom and Andy, and our family and friends for all of their love and encouragement these past several weeks and especially the past few days. They have been absolutely amazing and I am blessed to have them here with me today. Yet this day brings mixed emotions. Just one month ago, Illinois lost a true leader and trailblazer with the passing of Judy Barr Topinka. Judy was one of a kind. She always remembered that, tax, that she worked for the taxpayers. She constantly asked them what she could do to help them and make their lives better and then she worked tirelessly to make it happen. She stood up for what she thought was right. She spoke frankly and with common sense. Her legacy of servant leadership is a model for all of us. There will never be anyone quite like her.
but we do have an opportunity to govern in her spirit. We can raise the bar of fiscal responsibility and find less expensive ways to get the job done. We can focus on living within our means and work to reduce spending without slashing critical services. We can look for ways to make our government more efficient, and we can start by looking to consolidate the fiscal offices of the state with the Comptroller and the, and the Treasurer's office. This will save us $12 million a year. We all know that finances are our greatest challenge, and it's time that we address that challenge head on. We must remember that the dollars our state spends are hard-earned taxpayer dollars. We have a duty to the taxpayers of our state to spend each dollar wisely, and they have a right to see exactly where their money goes. We've made tremendous strides in government transparency in recent years. Now it's time to take that to the next level and to use technology to give our citizens every tool they need so they can follow their money. With the state facing a bill backlog of $6.7 billion and payment delays of three months or more, we have an obligation to, Illinois to ensure that Illinois' most vulnerable residents do not slip through the cracks. As Comptroller, I will continue to prioritize payments for not-for-profit and social service agencies that take care of our seniors, children, developmentally disabled, and other special needs residents. I have seen the difference that this policy can make firsthand. In my hometown of Lincolnshire, I have been an active volunteer and a member of the Board of Directors for the Riverside Foundation, a not-for-profit serving intellectually and developmentally disabled adults. At one point in time, the state was one year and nearly a million dollars behind in payments to Riverside. It reached a point where we were taking out loans in order to pay the bills. That started to change when the Comptroller's Office began prioritizing payments for organizations like, your, like ours. And we finally had some reliability in payments from our state. We could stop hand-wringing about what services we were going to have to cut and instead focus on how to better serve our clients. There are hundreds of stories like Riverside's from organizations in every part of Illinois and we have a moral obligation to ensure that they can count on their state to make good on their promised payments. As you know, I was appointed Comptroller just one week ago, and in the coming days I look forward to meeting with staff, talking with constituents, and reaching out to lawmakers to craft a comprehensive strategy. But there is one thing that I can promise you today. I will always speak out for what I believe is, is in our best long-term financial interest for our state. And if I ruffle some feathers along the way, well, so be it. I really believe I owe that to the taxpayers of our state. And in that same spirit, I look forward to working with everyone in every part of the state to tackle the fi financial issues we have doesn't matter if you are a student or a senior, a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, from Rockford or Carbondale or somewhere in between. Each of us knows that the most important thing that we can do for our state is to get our fiscal house in order, and we all have a responsibility to work together to get that job done. If we do these things, if we build on the example set by Judy, we can regain our fiscal footing in this state and make Illinois a great place for our families and our businesses. I look forward to partnering with each of you to make that happen. Now, let's get to work. Thank you all, and God bless. And now, Justice Rita Garman to administer the oath of office for Treasurer-elect Michael Rarix.
You're going to have to bend down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Michael Furrix. I, Michael Furrix. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Of the office. State treasurer. State treasurer. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, treasurer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to stand before you as your Illinois State Treasurer. Bow. <laughs> Following a succession of State Treasurers dating back almost 200 years to our state's founding. My personal story is not that much different than yours. I grew up in a union household in the small town of Gifford, Illinois. My dad still drives works as a truck driver, and my mom spent her career as a secretary. Through hard work, part-time jobs, and government-backed student loans, I went away to college, but returned to Champaign County to give back to the community that gave so much to me. Now, you probably hadn't heard of Gifford until maybe November of 2013, when life there changed dramatically. The same storm that ripped through central Illinois tore a path through the middle of my hometown. By the grace of God, lives were spared in Gifford. But some families lost almost everything. Now, immediately help poured into Gifford that very same day. People showed up with their work boots and their gloves and said, I'm here to help. Put me to work. Government also played a role in helping to rebuild vital infrastructure, with Republicans and Democrats working together, helping to rebuild my hometown. Today, more than a year later, people are still working together to ensure that a small town that is now back on its feet continues to emerge stronger than before. The lesson of Gifford is, when the people of Illinois face the greatest adversity is when they come together to accomplish their greatest achievements. So, like the people of Gifford, the people of Illinois have dreams of the kinds of lives they want to provide for themselves and for their families. Those dreams have been shaken. The Great Recession hit our communities six years ago. And many people felt like they were hit by a tornado. For middle class families, buying a home, raising a family, sending our kids to college, or saving for a secure retirement feels increasingly out of reach. But I don't accept that, and neither do most Illinoisans. Throughout the course of my campaign, I laid out our priorities for how the Treasurer's Office will help to rebuild the American dream expanding financial education, improving access to financial institutions, and providing more opportunities for stable investment right here in Illinois. I'm committed to investing in our students, our businesses, and our families. The state's, <laughs> the state's portfolio should be used as a tool to attract private investment and to spur growth. Through intelligent use of tech venture capital and link deposits, 
the Treasurer's Office can create greater opportunity for job creation and economic development. The people of Illinois must be able to access financial institutions willing to invest in their homes, neighborhoods, and futures. Unfortunately, not every community in Illinois has access to these resources. We should attack this issue head on by expanding access to basic financial needs so that everyone in this great state has the opportunity to prosper. Some of the most challenging decisions that people make in their lives involve finances. Whether it's starting a new business, saving for college, or buying a new home, these life-changing choices require fiscal knowledge and foresight. The Treasurer's Office must invest in financial literacy programs to provide the people of Illinois the tools to make the best decisions about managing their money. By expanding financial education, access, and opportunities to all Illinoisans, I believe that we can provide a strong foundation on which to build Illinois' economic future, making our state a better place to learn, to work, and raise a family. I am only one person. As the state's chief investment officer, I run only one office that faces the same budget constraints that we all do. But like the people of Gifford, like people across Illinois, from Rockford to Cairo, from Chicago to Rock Island, I am ready to lace up my boots, to put on my work gloves. I am ready to work to join the people of Illinois in rebuilding the American dream. Thank you all very much. Please welcome Reverend Dr. Clifford J. Hayes to deliver the benediction. There are two kinds of people in the world. There are those who are in the loving arms of God and they know it. And there are those who are in the loving arms of God and they don't know it. Make it the purpose of your heart to communicate God's love to the world. It's a, it's a little embarrassing here, hold on. It's God. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of a benediction here with the inauguration of Governor Rauner. I thought you were a man. <laughs> God wants me to communicate to you, not generic you, but to you personally, that you are loved and cherished today and you will be loved and cherished for all eternity. Amen. And now to perform home, the University of Illinois group, no comment. As we roll down this unfamiliar road And although this way you've been stringing us along Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home Settle down, it'll all be clear 
dum, 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 dum. Don't pay no mind to the demons that fill you with fear. Dum, 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 do, do, do. In trouble, it might drag you down. You get lost, you can't always be found. Just know you're not alone. Cause I'm gonna make this place your Please rise and remove all hats for the retirement of the colors. <laughs> 